So back in August, Michael Burry put on a $1.6 billion stock market crash bet. It was one of the most interesting stories, financial stories, this year so far, with a couple of weeks left in the trading year. His Scion Asset Management exposed nearly 90% of his portfolio by buying $866 million in SPY and $739 million in QQQ puts. However, he since closed out that trade, potentially at a loss. And as soon as he closed out, he put back on another trade. This time it was on the semiconductor iShares, semiconductor ETF, a SOX, ticker symbol SOXX. Now before we get into this trade to see if it's he's profitable or in the red, let's look at some of his track record. He's known for his big short of the Great Recession. He made out like a bandit. But here's some trades over the years that didn't go so well for Michael. So back in December of 2015, he predicted a stock market crash in the following months. But the S&P saw an 11% gain in the subsequent 12 months. Then in May of 2017, he predicted a new financial collapse, yet the S&P 500 recorded a 19% increase in the following 12 months. Then in September 2019, he forecasted a stock market crash due to an index ETF bubble, but the S&P gained 15% in the next 12 months. Then in March 2020, he perpetually held a bearish view by the stock market surge by 72%. In February 2021, he predicted significant stock market declines due to the speculative bubble, yet the S&P 500 increased by 16% in the subsequent months. Then in September 2022, he forecasted further failures and that the lows hadn't been touched, but the S&P 500 performed positively with a 21% gain. And then in January of this year, he foresaw a recession and a new cycle of inflation, yet the S&P 500 achieved a remarkable positive performance. So that's his track record over the last couple of years. Now, what's his new trade setup? Let's get into this article. It is coming from Investor Place. Michael Burry is making a huge bet against semiconductor stocks. So Burry's largest position is now put against 100,000 shares of iShares Semiconductor ETF. This entire position was acquired sometime during the third quarter and now accounts for a significant 47.86% of his 13F portfolio. As the name suggests, SOX is an ETF composed of semiconductor stocks. The T ETF consists of 30 stocks with advanced micro device carrying the largest weight at 9%. That's followed by Broadcom, then NVIDIA at 8.5 and 8% respectively. Now it's unclear when exactly during the third quarter Burry took on this position. Depending on his timing, Burry could already be sitting on a loss as SOX increased by about 6.5 percent from October 2nd to today. Semiconductor stocks have enjoyed impressive returns this year on the heels of AI. NVIDIA stock in particular is up by nearly 250 percent year to date. Investors should note that Scion is a fund with an extremely high turnover rate and low holding period. As a result, investors with a long holding period are unlikely to gain actionable insight from the fund's holdings. According to Wales Wisdom, Scion turnover rate is 230%, while its average holding period is just 1.15 quarters. For stocks in Scion's top 10 positions, the average holding period is just 0.1 quarters. All right, so regarding stocks, his turnover rate might work to his advantage. This is the monthly chart. And if he bought some time in, say, August, September, then he would have been in the black, depending if and when he got out. If he got out at the, at the lows of October, then he made out like a bandit, depending on if he held on. Um, well, he would be at break even or even at a loss. So we're going to analyze 
socks and uh, we can see why it turned in October price hit support and, and in the, which was resistance in the past now I do want to bring your attention to this monthly sellers level at the let's say five forty eight level and you can see how price dipped its toes at the bottom of the zone and then shot back down so this will be a level where I would take some off the table based on what happened in July of this year scrolling to the weekly chart you can see how the past couple of weeks price has just been range bound and really buyers and sellers are still duking it out for position All right, I do want to go down to the daily chart. And this is that range bound price action we saw on the weekly chart. However, what sticks out to me is that there's larger selling wicks than there are buying wicks. And how you do have a gap down at the 490 level. I do want to look at that monthly sellers level on the daily chart. This was a nice M pattern. Typically what you do when price gets back to the trough of that M pattern, you short stock and that worked out, that setup worked out. So again, despite these rejection wicks, the RSI is above 50, which indicates a an uptrend. However, it is making lower highs, while price action is making equal highs, which tells me that the momentum to the upside is waning. So. No trade setup at the moment. You get a breakout. That breakout should last maybe $25. Get a breakdown. Look for that gap to fill at the 490 level. But based on the fact that Michael only holds his stocks for 0.1 quarters, uh, which is a little less than three weeks, I'm going to say that he made out in this trade. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Please like the video.